And so what we have um, is uh, a situation where if people are allowed to say and communicate whatever they want, that is a situation where no authority in any form has the power to decide what people see and hear. Once you start censoring before the point of delivery, which is to say algorithms and self-censorship is now doing, you are giving authority the power to decide what people see and hear. And of course, it starts out with one excuse. We must stop jihadis, um, you know, justifying or promoting violence. Okay. Oh, fake news. Fake news. What's fake news? Whatever we say it is. Uh, yeah, we've got to stop people saying fake news. So we're going to censor that. Oh, um, the more people we can get to be uh, victims and upset, the more excuses we've got to censor even more, right? Yeah. So give people all the excuses they want to be upset and to be, feel a victim. And then we can censor people saying things that upset them. And so you're moving along this road. None of that can happen when we have the free flow of information, nothing censored. So people say, well, what about, you know, saying go and kill people? Yeah, but there's laws against that. There's laws against that. There's laws against telling people, oh, burn that house down. But they're after the point of delivery, which means you can deal with um, the extremes of what how people use speech, but it's, it's heard. Mm -hmm then you can deal with it if it needs dealing with it. And most speech does not need dealing with it at all. You know, come on, let's go and kill this person. Well, obviously, um, you know, you deal with that. You have to deal with that. But it's after the point of delivery. And as long as we hold that line, authority has no power to censor. What we're seeing now is the opposite of that. That be beyond, Before that line is, is, is where most censorship is starting to happen, and thus freedom is disappearing. What do you think the biggest cover-up on this planet is, David, for your perspective? Oh, I think the biggest cover-up is the conspiracy in totality. Um, because, you know, people say to me sometimes, uh, you seem to see conspiracies everywhere. I don't see one conspiracy with multiple faces and multiple facets not the same as seeing conspiracies everywhere. Um, and it's simply this, that there is a cabal that wants to create a situation, which I've been saying since the 1990s and early 1990s, and look at it now, where we have a world government, a world central bank, the world government dictating to every community on earth, a world central bank dictating all finance, a world single digital currency, um, which means that through algorithms and even, you know, human input, you can wipe someone's bank account away because there's no cash in that society. You think you've got money? <laughs> there you go. You can do it. You can do it. Um, very simply, it's control. You go into a shop now and you hand over... Um, a credit card, electronic money, and they say, sorry, won't accept your card, you can still pay cash. When there's no cash and they say, won't accept your card or your microchip as it's meant to be eventually, then whoever controls the computer controls if you have the ability to purchase anything. Uh, so that's all about control. They want a world army to impose the will of the world government, and that is um, uh, ex the expansion, expansion of NATO. This European army is all part of that, that they're proposing. Um, uh, and they want a microchipped uh, population connected to a global computer system, actually what, what is, what is uh, known as the smart grid. Um, you know, this technological society uh, is a Trojan horse of monumental proportions. And if people remember nothing, they should uh, remember this. They're now openly talking, people like Ray Kurzweil at um, the Google executive, you know, Google, Facebook, all these organizations, Amazon, they're all controlled by the same force to the same end. That's why they're becoming monopolies dictating to people what they can see and hear and all that stuff. Um, it's all planned. But um, 
what Ray Kurzweil is talking about now and people like him is that by around the year 2030, humanity will be, have their brains connected to artificial intelligence. And he's very open about it. Uh, as um, this goes on, artificial intelligence will do more and more of human thinking until human thinking as we know it now is basically negligible. In other words, you'll be a computer terminal on someone else's internet. And the reason they're being so open about it is the, is the sales pitch, which is um, you'll be superhuman if, if, if you do this. And what you'll be is subhuman, and human consciousness, human thought, human emotion as we've known it will be over. Because every thought, every emotional response will come from AI. He who controls AI will then control every human's perceptions directly who is connected to AI. And we've been taken along a very clear uh, process to take us to that point. Stage one, see, I'm coming up 67. And I'm glad I was born when I have, doing what I'm doing now, because I have a radar. I can remember what the world was like before. People born into it. You see, when you get born into the world, the world appear, you, you think the world is how it is because you're born into it. This is how it is, okay? But it's not how it always was. And when you're born into the world as it is, you, you don't really have so much of a compass to, to get a fix on the world as it is because it's just how it is. When you were born before it, it, it is as it is now, you have a compass, you have a comparison, you can see the scale, the stunning scale of the change, not least since this technological society kicked in and, and then went kind of on steroids. Stage one, you get the population addicted to technology they can hold. Well, basically achieved, smartphones, tablets, etc. And you target especially the young. Why? Because they're going to be the adults at the point you want to bring in this full-blown AI-controlled human. You want them so addicted and obsessed with technology that, as happens now, on, on, on one expression of it, they'll get up in the middle of the night and go and um, queue in the dark outside an Apple bloody store to get the first version of the new thing. Uh, get them addicted enough and they'll queue up waiting to be connected to AI, right? So that's why they're targeting the young. Stage two, because what you want to do, you want to get in the body. And if they went directly to the body without anything in between, people would go, what's going on? Totalitarian tiptoe, you see. So the next stage is on the body, what they call wearables, holdables to wearables. This is your, your Apple Watch and your Bluetooth and all these gadgets now that people wear that are connected to the internet. And then you go to the next stage, which is in the body. I spoke uh, a little while ago last year in Sweden, and people, um, thousands of people now in Sweden are being microchipped um, and, and, and queuing up for it, having parties to celebrate. <laughs> Ethel's been microchipped. <laughs> um, and, and, and this is what happens with addiction. Um, it's called addiction for a reason. You were addicted. And so this, is, this has been the um, process that is taking us along here, kitty, 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 here, kitty, 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 along this road to the point <clears throat> where they want to introduce fully blown AI controlled humans. This is where it's going. And it's within the lifetime, well within the lifetime of people alive today. Even those that aren't young, it's within their lifetimes too. And, and, and all these diversions, look here, look here, smell this, look at this, hear this, are all to stop us going, deep breath, take a step back, look at it again shite look what they're doing and that's what i'm doing you know i'm, I'm pointing this out i'm saying over here see